New part day. Always excited to get a new bike part. I love it. This is a shock stop suspension stem by Redshift Sports. I've been thinking about getting one of these for a while. I finally decided to drop the loot. A few people that I know swear by this, so I bought one, ordered it on Amazon, came right to my door. First thing I noticed is it's a little heavy, a little heavier than I was expecting, but I'll weigh it in a second, unbox it, and get into that. It's about 150 bucks. Not cheap, but if this takes the jarring nature of washboard roads the out of the equation, or at least just makes my ride a little more supple, then it'll be worth its weight in gold, and I don't care how much it weighs. I was able to get one in the 90 millimeter length, which is the same length I'm using. I'm gonna install it on the bike, so I'm gonna do 150 mile overnight or tomorrow, and then in a few weeks, I'm doing the smoke and fire 420. After that, I'll probably have about six or 700 miles ridden on this stem. Once I'm done with all that, I'll report back to you with what I think after the knowledge I gained from riding with it for a couple months. So we'll see. No way to know until we try it out. Let's do it. Okay, here we are two and a half months later. All in all, I've racked up about 930 miles with 75,000 feet of climbing on the shock stop stem. Half of this was loaded up for bikepacking the smoke and fire race. The terrain was mostly dirt varying from Gucci gravel to baby head laden technical single track. I feel it's been enough time for me to gather my thoughts and give a long-term review, which I'll do in a minute. But first, let's dig a little deeper into why I switched to this stem in the first place and nerd out a little over the techie stuff. I'm always looking for ways to reduce hand and arm fatigue, especially for bike packing and long days in the saddle on my rigid bike. The constant pounding can really take it out of you. This stem has been on the market for a long while now, so it's nothing new to many of you. I procrastinated purely based on the $150 price tag and having the if it ain't broke, don't fix it mentality. I know what you're thinking, $150 is nothing compared to the overall cost of bike packing and high-end bikes. And just because something isn't broken doesn't mean it shouldn't be improved. I'm always looking for ways to make incremental improvements to my bike setup. So I'm a little embarrassed that it took me so long to give this stem a try, but better late than never. Let's dig into the techie bits. The first thing I did was weigh it. For comparison, I also weighed the Niner RDO stem I was previously using. The Redshift website claims 264 grams for the 90 millimeter shock stop, and my park scale was pretty much dead on at 266. My Niner stem was way lighter at 112 grams. That's a considerable difference if you're a weight weenie, but it's also assuming you're comparing apples to apples. If the shock stop can increase comfort and reduce hand fatigue, then we're talking apples and oranges. The shock stop currently comes in five lengths ranging from 80 millimeters to 120 millimeters. Until recently, the 90 millimeter was the shortest, but the 80 is hot off the press and should be available soon. There's also talk of producing a lightweight carbon version in the future, but nothing concrete as of yet. Breaking news. Just before finishing this video, Redshift announced the addition of the shock stop pro suspension stem to their lineup. This version uses CNC machining and titanium hardware for a 15% weight reduction over the original shock stop. As of now, it's available for pre-order at a price of 230 bucks and looks to ship in February 2021. Each length has a plus or minus 6 degree angle, with the 100 millimeter also being offered in a whopping plus or minus 30 degree angle high-rise version. The stem comes with two elastomers installed and three extras so you can customize the feel to your liking. Out of the box, it comes set up with a 60-70 elastomer combo. This is recommended for a rider weight of 135 to 155 pounds using drop bars. I weigh 155, so I set it and forget it. In case you need to swap elastomers, Redshift offers detailed instructions and a video. It's pretty straightforward if you have a three and four millimeter Allen wrench. The stem is constructed of 60-60 T6 aluminum and has a maximum rider weight of 300 pounds. Right now, it's only available for 31.8 diameter handlebars, so if you're rocking newer 35 millimeter bars, you're out of luck. But most bikes spec with fatter bars have squishy forks anyway. On the other hand, if you're using skinnier bars, like 25.4 or 26 millimeter, you can easily adapt them with shims. I found a couple of other interesting tidbits worth mentioning. Redshift recommends going up one level of stiffness for every 10 to 20 pounds of weight for bikepacking loads. When I'm bikepacking, my sleep kit's usually on the bars and it only weighs a couple of pounds, so I just left it as is. I prefer to err on the softer side of the tension settings. But it's good to know if I'm ever packing heavier loads in the future. They also say the elastomers should stay flexible down to negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you're considering one of these for winter cycling or fat biking, you're in the clear. The stack height for the steer tube is 40 millimeters, which is pretty standard for stems these days. When I switched mine over, I didn't even have to add or subtract any headset spacers. In terms of longevity, Redshift states the elastomer should go at least three to five years, obviously depending on terrain, conditions, your riding style, all of that. 
They also mentioned there's a two to three ride break-in period, but I didn't notice it. With all that out of the way, here's my thoughts after putting the stem to good use. First off, if you're thinking about using this as a replacement for a real suspension fork, don't. The shock stop has roughly 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch of suspension. So if you're expecting your rigid fork to magically have four or five inches of travel, sorry. That's not what this stem is designed for. However, if you're simply looking for something to take the curse out of washboard gravel, you're in luck. It doesn't eliminate all vibrations, but it definitely goes a long way to taking the edge off of bone numbing chatter. And it kept me from getting beaten up too badly on the Smoke and Fire 420. I found that it even offers some relief for moderately rowdy single track. The stem has performed perfectly with no issues whatsoever. It's still on the bike working flawlessly and I have no intentions of taking it off. I thought maybe the elastomers would stretch or get worn out, but it's still responding just as well as it did on day one. What's interesting is it keeps the pedaling efficiency and stiffness of the rigid fork while offering some comfort, so you kind of get the best of both worlds. Instead of coasting through rough sections of gravel, I find myself pedaling through, keeping my average mile an hour higher. But you've got to remember it's your handlebars and stem absorbing the shock, not your fork. So you can still get bucked around on demanding terrain, and I've had a few harsh reminders of this. During extended days in the saddle is when the benefits really come into play. I've noticed that my hands, wrists, and forearms are way less affected by the jarring terrain and feel fresh overall. I don't even notice the stem anymore. Sometimes I have to give it a quick push to double check that it's still working. I've become so used to the subtle relief that I'd be a little scared to go back to my old stem. The strap for my gas tank wraps right around where the shock stop articulates. I thought it might interfere, but no issues with that either. Honestly, the only negative I see, other than having to fork out some loot, is the extra weight. But in my mind, it's a no-brainer that's well worth the small weight penalty. Plain and simple, I'd recommend this stem to anybody that enjoys extended off-road rides and bikepacking. So there you have my two cents on the Redshift Shock Stop stem. What a tongue, twi bleh, tongue twister. <laughs> if you want to learn more about it or are interested in buying one, I put some links in the description below. I hope you found this video useful, and if so, give us a like. Have you tried one of these stems already? Are you intrigued by it? Let me know in the comments below. I always appreciate your feedback. I upload fresh bike packing and mountain biking content every week, so please consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, drink beer, live happy. Thanks so much for squeezing dirty teeth into your busy schedule. Please help us reach more people and ensure you receive new videos by giving this video a like, subscribing to the channel, and clicking the notification bell. Until next time, ride bikes, drink beer, live happy.